So uh, the title of your book kind of lays it out for us. It brings us into this conversation about the Pandora Papers leak that just came out. For people who don't know what this is, can you put it in simple terms for us? What was found out by this group of journalists? Yeah, um, it was a massive leak uh, coming from 14 financial services firms in different corners of the world uh, that reveals kind of the, the ways in which the super wealthy in the world uh, hide their wealth and avoid taxes. Mm -hmm. And it was organized by the um, International Consortium of Investigative Journalists the biggest sort of coordinated collaborative of that kind ever, 600 journalists, major newspapers and publications in a number of countries here in the US. It was the Washington Post, the Guardian in England, Pais in Spain. So it's a huge undertaking. And uh, it sort of basically unmasks some of the secrets of how wealthy people hide their money. And it's kind of a cliffhanger right there. What did it find out about how they mask this? And something to point out is a lot of this is being done offshore. Yes. Well, you know, there have been leaks in the past. Five and a half years ago, there was a leak called the Panama Papers. Yes. This is actually a much bigger leak. And it showed that uh, wealthy people primarily outside the United States, because the leak didn't come from the U.S., it came from firms that wealthy people in other parts of the world would be using, that people use shell, anonymous shell companies, trusts, offshore banking accounts, and usually some combination of all of those things to uh, move money out of whatever country they're living in and wherever they uh, earned or extracted their wealth and moving it using this kind of international shell game they're, they're able to avoid tax authorities in their home country and sequester that wealth somewhere else. So we always have known that this has happened in the past. We just didn't know the details of it, right? How it actually happens. Yeah, in some ways, it's like a secret hiding in plain sight because a lot of these companies market themselves uh, to the super wealthy, but also to sort of merely affluent folks. Um, you know, you can create a trust in the Bahamas or you could create a limited liability company in Delaware. What kind of gives it life is the fact that these are real people. We now know sort of how they're using it. We now know, for instance, that the orange juice magnet of Brazil uh, moved his money to a dynasty trust in South Dakota and sort of has, to, you know, you have to say, well, why would they do that? But, you know, so it so it gives uh, identities to the system, we know that there's this hidden wealth system, we know about these various ownership forms, but this is sort of showing us the playbook, if you will, how real people use it. Yeah, let's bring it back to South Dakota for a minute because it has the most active trust right now. I think you said 81 uh, as of right now. It's because of the low taxes. It's because of the privacy when it comes to the court documents revolving around uh, the trust here. They're permanently private, right? Yes, and, and actually the, the 81 trusts are just the ones that were found in, in, the Pan, in the Pandora leaks. Of course, there are hundreds of trusts for people from the United States. We, the, these are trusts that people from outside the United States. And the other part of the, uh, the secret sauce in South Dakota is that they've changed their laws to be very accommodating to the trust industry. And one of those rules is the rule that trusts have to dissolve within a certain period of time. Um, it, it's kind of an arcane principle of law, but it's, it's actually meaningful because trusts d used to not be able to exist forever. They suspended those rules so that you could set up a trust that could exist for centuries mm. in South Dakota. So if you're a super wealthy billionaire and you're looking to park your money, not just for, for your lifetime, but you're thinking dynastically, you're thinking three, four generations down the line, South Dakota is a very attractive place to, to put your money. Mm. I mean, for someone who might be sitting in South Dakota, the average person making an, a median you know, income, how does this affect them? What is this doing for them? Well, in a way, it's, it's not har too harmful and it's not too beneficial. Um, it's like any state 
and South Dakota is a small state, you know, less than 850,000 people. There are only probably 500 people working in the trust industry, but those are pretty good paying jobs in a state that, you know, is more, largely a rural economy. So that small industry has a lot of influence at the state legislature. And they actually have a task force that meets all the time that uh, sort of decides, should we update the law? Should we tweak the regulations to keep South Dakota competitive with Nevada and Wyoming and what other states they're competing with to attract trust money? Mm -hmm. So for the ordinary person in South Dakota, it's like, okay, this is just another uh, business group. They have high paying salaries probably, um, but it doesn't really matter to us. It really matters is to everyone else because um, uh, states and localities and tax authorities are losing revenue because these wealthy people, instead of paying taxes, are moving their money to South Dakota. So mm -hmm. it's requiring that the rest of us pick up the slack from money that the super wealthy are not paying in taxes. Same with at the global level. You know, you've got uh, criminal elements and you've got crooks and billionaires bringing their money to South Dakota. That's allowing, you know, that's meaning that those states are sort of being plundered. You know, you have a corrupt public official in Mexico who's siphoning money from a public works project. Where do they take it? Right. They take it, bring it to the United States. So it's kind of like having a drug house in the neighborhood. If I'm the absentee owner of the drug house and those drug traffickers are paying me twice the normal rent. That's fine with me. I don't live there. It's the neighbors who are suffering. Right. I mean, what is the legality of all this? Could well, we see lawsuits because of this leak? Well, possibly. I mean, here's the thing. It's legal in the sense that the trust industry basically is writing the laws. Um, you know, if you ask an industry group to write the laws in their interest, they will come up with one set of rules that may not be really in the public interest, but they're saying, hey, it's legal, you know. Um, so that's the problem. And, the, and there's a whole industry, I should say, and this is really the subject of my book. I, I call it the, the wealth defense industry. Mm -hmm. These are the tax attorneys, accountants, wealth managers that, that serve very ultra high net worth individuals, people with $30 million or more, right? Who can pay for their services. Well, they're quite a formidable industry and they love complexity and they love complex trusts and all these shell games. And they design these are, you know, kind of tax loopholes and like those folks will say, Hey, we're just helping our clients obey the law. But what's really clear is they're writing the laws. They're rigging the rules. With one hand, they're helping their clients. On the other hand, they're writing laws to help them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's legal, but it's certainly not ethical. Were there any ultra-rich billionaires in the United States that came out of this leak? You know, um, there were a few. Uh, you know, the, the billionaire Robert uh, Smith uh, was implicated because he was using trust. You know, it's interesting, the British Virgin Islands has a whole set of, is a real center for uh, offshore activity. That's where, by the way, Jeffrey Epstein mm -hmm. uh, helped his wealthy clients create shell companies in the British Virgin Islands, but he also helped create these trusts called grants, grants or retained annuity trusts here in the U.S. So, so those are the, you know... But it, you're, you're right, Daytona, not a lot of U.S. names are showing up in these disclosures, in these leaks, because if you're a wealthy person in the United States, you don't, you don't go for your financial services to Singapore or Belize or British Virgin Islands. You might go to British Virgin Islands, but mostly you go to kind of the wealth defense industry professionals here in the U.S. Those people will then kind of mask your identity and and do your bidding globally mm. um, so we're not going to see a lot of names because the leaks really didn't come from anywhere near the u.s but with a lot of this being exposed what does that mean for the wealth hiding community here at home in the united states it's turning up the heat on that absolutely um it's going to and and you know, here, uh, the United States has been glowing around the world. Uh, Republican and Democratic administrations say, 
We want to clean up corruption. You know, Guatemala, clean up your corruption. Hmm. Mexico, clean up your corruption. Uh, well, guess what? It's time for us to, to put our own house in order. If we're going to have any moral authority in the world about trying to clean up corruption, we need to look at the ways in which illicit funds and money laundering and, you know, kleptocratic money is coming into the United States. How, unfortunately, the U.S. has become a weak link. We have become a tax haven. And the rest of the world now sees that through the revelations of the Pandora Papers. Yeah, I mean, uh, we were just talking before the interview, Jeff Bezos, richest man alive, 2007, didn't pay any taxes. You know, Elon Musk also not paying federal taxes. How is that possible? Well, you know, it, it's partly, and this is, uh, you know, thanks to ProPublica and uh, a number of exposés, we've learned some things about how the wealthy do that. For instance, let's say I have um, uh, investments uh, that are worth, you know, a billion dollars, but, uh, you know, on, on paper, they're worth a hundred million dollars. Um, instead of selling those assets and I'll borrow against them. So I won't have to pay interest on appreciated capital gains. Uh, what we found, and actually ProPublica just released this, the hundred wealthiest people in the United States, half of them use this trust, what's called a grant or retained annuity trust to avoid paying inheritance taxes. Mm -hmm. So that's like a very complicated shell game. Uh, don't ask me to explain it to you because it's uh, you, you'll fall asleep. I mean, it's designed <laughs> designed to be complicated and unexplainable to ordinary people. Um, but you know, so so they wealthy billionaires in the U.S. kind of use the same toolbox: trusts, shell companies, anonymous ownership. Um, but trusts are are a biggie. And we need to reform trust in the United States. You know, there is a legitimate person, reason to have a trust, which is, let's say I have a child that has a special need and that I hope I want to take care of after I am alive. So I set up a trust to protect, you know, to put aside money for them so that they can live uh, a good life. You know, to me, that's a reasonable purpose for a trust. People have taken that ownership form and they have distorted it. And they have morphed it into something that really just becomes an instrument for sequestering wealth and keeping it outside the reach of oversight and accountability and taxation. Mm -hmm. And so we should reform trusts in this country so that they serve the public interest, not just the private uh, gain. This week, President Biden was asked about the Pandora Papers leak. He didn't really have anything to say about it. Do you think that could change uh, under the Biden administration? Well, he has been pretty outspoken about the system of global corruption. Uh, but remember, he represented the state of Delaware for 36 years in the U.S. Senate. The state of Delaware is one of the weak links. Uh, that's the place you go if you want to incorporate a limited liability company and protect your identity. Hmm. So there have been leaks that have shown, you know, all kinds of corrupt activity, child pornography, to sex trafficking businesses, they incorporate in Delaware. Hmm. Eventually, sometimes the law enforcement can crack into them, but Lord knows there are many more that are not. So, uh, but I think the president is sensitive to that. I think lots of U.S. politicians sort of see that we can't be a voice for good in the world if, if this kind of corruption is happening in our country. So I imagine the president will step up along with other uh, congressional leaders to, to really want to take a closer look at some of this troubling data. So this is just the first wave of exposure. Um, we're expecting to see and read more about this leak. What do you think will be eye-opening for the American people? Well, I think we'll hear more stories. Uh, you know, there's apparently 130 billionaires profiled in the Pandora Papers who are you know, using these trusts, using these shell companies, it'll be interesting to see if there are more U.S. Uh, stories that come out. Um, but one thing we should all know is this is rocking the world. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, if we go south of the border to Mexico, 3,000 public officials, uh, billionaires and sort of wealthy elites within Mexico have been unmasked 
through the Pandora Papers. So it's going to it's going to shake shake things up in a lot of places, and hopefully it'll shake things up a little bit here in the U.S. where we really say, you know what, we should get our house in order. Hmm. Well, we'll be watching it as more and more comes out. Chuck Collins, thank you so much for being with us on the show. Again, the author of The Wealth Hoarders, How Billionaires Pay Millions to Hide Trillions. 